My question is to, uh, to perhaps all of the panelists. This is the fourth in a series of stewardship conferences. The fact that we're still meeting is a positive sign, but I think there's a palpable frustration on the lack of progress on the stewardship agenda. And I wonder if each one of you would comment on whether or not you think that the roadmap for stewardship is of some urgency and whether or not each one of your organizations or sectors is doing something to meet that state of urgency for stewardship. I'm going to ask people to respond in the original order. Well, it's certainly an issue we have been engaged in for years. And I said our approach to stewardship is, is sort of a continual management improvement, uh, continuing to raise the bar in the organization, um, continuing to adjust the, uh, the parameters. I, I don't know that I have a lot of answer uh, beyond that. Um, I'm going to stop there and leave other people time. I think our position is kind of obvious in this. Um, we see it extremely important. We'd like to see it move ahead quickly. We provided funding for the past four conferences. We provided funding for the two reports that were produced out of here. And we also contacted as many of the organizations as we could to see what they had to say. And we had a sense from them that there was frustration, that there wasn't movement. So yeah, I'd agree. Let's move on with it. I, I think I said that in my presentation that we feel as a, as a farm organization, as, as farmers, that it's very important that we move forward um, we continue to work and adapt our, our initial ALICE project uh, in, in the province, and uh, I think we'll be seeing something fairly new, uh, maybe different variants of it come out and looking at launching it province-wide in Manitoba. Uh, on a comment to what Virginia was saying, that, that they, they feel that the cost of developing a national EGNS uh, proponent for, for specifically agriculture, on our point, we feel that that some of the things that they are looking at are probably the Cadillac versions. And as producers, uh, we'd be satisfied with a rusty Ford or a rusty Chevy. You pick your make and model. But let's start somewhere and let's get moving, and then we can build upon it. And, and as uh, you know, more funding sources come online and, and, the, and the value is seen, I think the funding for that will come along. But let's start somewhere and let's move forward. And that's, that's been our position. Okay, before Virginia concludes on this, I want to point out that this will be the last three questions. We just have 10 minutes left. Virginia, please. So in response to that, I would say big ideas take uh, time. If I go back to my naval roots, if you're trying to uh, turn a speedboat, it's very quick. You need a lot more sea room to turn a, a destroyer or a battleship. So you need time for a big idea, and stewardship is a big, time, is a big idea when you're talking about what is discussed in the roadmap. That said, there's lots of actions already underway, as was reflected in the report. Certainly within our group, we're very heavily engaged in stewardship. And the last thing I'll say, uh, stemming from this conference, uh, it's really raised uh, my um, awareness of the, of the need, perhaps, of even more integrated action amongst the uh, levels of government. And so I have the pleasure of being the co-chair of the Federal Provincial Territorial uh, Directors of Wildlife. And I will raise that at our fall meeting as to whether or not uh, there is some action to be taken uh, in our strategic uh, plan that we review and we'll be reviewing this fall as it relates to the stewardship agenda that we could do collectively. Uh, my question is for Mr. Grinnell with uh, CAP. Um, my name is Amanda Wild and with the Alberta, Spar Alberta Sport, Recreation, Parks and Wildlife Foundation through the Alberta government. Um, and I work... Um, somewhat, just new, so you have to excuse me, um, with um, on-the-ground producers, private landowners, and, and that kind of thing. And there seems to be a real reluctance, especially among the producing community, to work with government. You don't want to wait. Government is inevitably slow, and you want action now, which is understandable. Um, how do you see involving um, the producers in the roadmap to sustainability, given that it is inevitably a very long process with a lot of background that still needs to be done? I think the key to, to moving forward and, and to moving forward in, in you know, probably a, a faster pace than maybe governments used to is that if, if everyone collaborates on, on the goal and, and government has and the NGOs have and everybody has their own idea of how this should work, if you collaborate on that idea and say, will this work? Will this work for you on your farm? And that's the key. I mean, we see a lot of programs that come through that, that uh, the intent and the idea is great, but are not practical that will actually work on the landscape. And I think if you have that collaboration and that 
involvement from the beginning on developing this, that's where you'll get something that is achievable. And, and if we go back to the environmental farm plan process and something that I was involved with for the last six years in the province, we had the three funding, or the three parties, the federal government, the provincial government, and the producer organization delivering it, collaborating together, you know, we've met and exceeded the, the expectations of everybody within that was going to participate in this program at all levels. And I think that's the key is that collaboration and that real input, not input at the end of the project when it's just about to be released, but the ongoing implement or analysis and, and, and conversation of how to move this forward. Stu Hiltz from the University of Guelph and the Ontario Farmland Trust. I've been quite impressed by the fact that we have this State of Stewardship in Canada report to react to at the beginning of the conference and enjoyed the panelists' comments. But I have been struck in reading it and hearing about the recommendations that all of them are for further study and talking, uh, apart from perhaps the request for money. Um, and the stories I'm hearing from the panelists, the stories we heard in the introduction last night, are much more about action. Um, action on the ground and ranging all the way from some of the farmers and the programs they're undertaking through thousands of non-government groups to uh, the big, like the oil producers. Um, the report included uh, a table where it showed that not many of the actions or the recommendations made at the last conference in Newfoundland had been acted on, uh, but in fact the work at the ground level carries on uh, expanding all the time and affecting all kinds of practical on the ground actions. So my question for all the panelists, and I'd invite the audience to use their comment sheets to also make suggestions, what other recommendations could we add to those six that would be a little bit more action oriented and a little bit more focused on landowners and the non-government groups that tend to do all the on the ground work? Excellent question. Who would like to go first? I'm going to pick you, okay? <laughs> well, I, I mean, as, as a producer, I think that we are taking actions on our own. And, you know, those actions vary depending on the economic conditions that we are under. And, and that's, that's the challenging part of, of developing programs to, to, you know, keep a steady course. Um, we continue to move ahead. I don't know if I have any extra recommendations. My first recommendation, I think, was just to do let's, let's move forward and, and, and where the rubber meets the road and have some action. And, and we can study as we, go, as we go forward. I think that if we don't move now, that's, it's, you know, it could very well be too late if you wait another five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years for however long it takes to get a national program going. I think if you start now and, and you build upon it, you'll learn and, and you'll make some mistakes. But... You know, if you make mistakes, that's where you should be learning and, and changing what you're doing. So I think that's the important part. I think you've identified a very good point. Um, you're correct. Action on the ground continues. I think one of the things that have to be addressed is how do we accelerate that action on the ground? How do we find ways to reach those people who aren't doing that action on the ground? We know there's a lot of good people out there, a lot of folks working hard, um, right now, Wildlife Habitat Canada is housing the Canadian Business and Biodiversity Secretariat. We have 15 companies who have all agreed to pay to have a case study on their best business practices. They range from manufacturing through to petroleum through to uh, perfume, actually, and water. And all of them agree that they need to do more, but they also agree how do they reach those who aren't doing anything now or who are doing less. And I think one of the fears in a report like this is people don't want to tell other people or organizations what they must do for the fear that they'll drive them away. That they'll say, this report is telling us what to do, we know what to do. And I think perhaps part of the roadmap process or coalition process would be to address these kinds of issues so that you can find ways to accelerate. I think time's running out in a lot of things, and I think we do have to address it. 